Hey guys, Levelcap here, and this week in gaming, Valheim became one of the most successful Steam games ever. BlizzCon 2021 kicked off with some big reveals. Cold War and Warzone Season 2 is bringing significant changes to both games and much more. Valheim is shaping up to be one of the most popular indie titles of all time. It seems like every day it's breaking a new record or climbing even higher on the Steam charts. Last night, it hit a new peak of over 400,000 concurrent players. Its previous record was just shy of that at 390,000. So far, the Viking-themed survival game has pulled in 3 million players, and it did it in less than three weeks. To put Valheim's success into context, PUBG took months to hit these kind of player counts. While the game eventually peaked at over 3 million concurrent players, Valheim has essentially won the 100 meter dash and is one of the most successful game launches ever on Steam. It also also shows no signs of slowing down. Valheim gets bigger and bigger every day. What's most surprising about Valheim's success is that it's not even a finished product. It's an early access title that won't be finished for at least a year. In that time, the developers plan on doubling the available content and adding a ton of new gameplay mechanics. Right now, Valheim is in a pretty bare-bones state compared to where the devs intend on taking it. Early access stuff aside, probably the biggest question about the game's future is a console launch. Valheim's website has an FAQ page that says there's no plans to port the game to consoles, but it's not set in stone. Given the game's insane success, a console port sounds like a pretty good idea. 2020 and everyone being stuck at home has kickstarted a revolution in gaming. Social games that offer fun co-op experiences are more popular popular than ever before. Among Us, Fall Guys, Valheim, there's no telling what will be next, but it's almost guaranteed it will be even bigger than the games that came before it. BlizzCon 2021 kicked off with some big reveals. The long-rumored Diablo 2 remake is launching later this year. It's called Diablo 2 Resurrected and is a faithful modernization of the original game. It'll be available on every platform under the sun except mobile devices and features cross-play. While it will feature 4K 60fps on consoles and even higher frame rates on PC, the core game is still running everything at 25fps. And this is actually important because it's a vital component of the original game's feel. Visually, the remaster is pretty impressive while still being faithful to Diablo 2's sprite-based artwork. You'll also be able to switch between the remastered or original graphics while playing. The remaster is a sharp contrast to Blizzard's recent remaster of Warcraft 3. That remaster was an absolute disaster. The developers reworked core aspects of the game's visuals, and they often ended up worse. Cutscenes that were supposed to get the royal treatment got botched, but the worst part was the remaster completely replaced the original game. So the years and years of player-created content just stopped working as intended when the remaster launched. And considering that the entire MOBA genre originated as a Warcraft 3 mod, well, that's a pretty big deal. Activision Blizzard brought on Vicarious Visions to assist with the Diablo 2 remaster. Their previous project, the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater remake, received universal praise for being both a faithful adaptation and a total modernization of the game's most iconic skateboarding franchise. It's unclear if Vicarious will ever return to the Tony Hawk franchise, but their involvement with the Diablo 2 remaster can only be good. Diablo 4 also got a new trailer announcing a new hero class called Rogue. The gameplay shows a fast-moving archer-type character that blends melee and bow attacks together. There's still no release date for Diablo 4, and the gameplay footage has some pretty obvious FPS issues, so I guess we're still a long way from seeing the final product. Blizzard also revealed new info for Overwatch 2. Most of it was just behind-the-scenes look at a new character appearance in maps. Unfortunately, there's still no release date for the sequel. Based on the video shown during BlizzCon's opening day, it's clear the game still has a long way to go before it's finished. Instead of just being a minor update to the existing game that adds a few new things, Overwatch 2 is actually like a total revamp. It adds a ton of PvE content, a campaign, and a new hero system like passive abilities and skill trees, all while supporting the original game via crossplay. Cold War and Warzone Season 2 is going to be huge. It brings significant changes to the Battle Royale with new points of interest, a cargo tanker, and potentially zombies content. That's on top of new weapons, operators, storyline content, and more. Cold War is getting four new multiplayer maps, a large-scale zombies mode on fireteam maps called Outbreak, six new weapons, and new modes. Season 1 integrated Warzone and Cold War together. Its launch was a bit of a mess as it added so many new guns, bugs, and balance 
cause problems to Warzone. The Season 2 update is smaller in some ways since it, well, you know, doesn't add like 30 new guns at once, but there's still potential for new content to break the game's current meta in big ways. Recently, players have discovered that the Cold War M16 can drop players in as little as 4 frames. To put that into perspective, the fastest killing Call of Duty guns average like 100 to 200 milliseconds to drop an enemy. 4 frames at 60 FPS is less than 70 milliseconds. I think it's safe to say that Raven or Treyarch will be nerfing the M16 pretty soon. As for future content right now, it sounds like the Ural Mountains area from Cold War is coming to Warzone as a new large-scale battle royale map. This particular rumor has been floating around for months, and the most recent leak about it suggests we might see it launch in March. That would be a pretty big deal, considering Warzone has only one large-scale map since launch. Rebirth Island is certainly a new map, but it doesn't cater to the core Warzone experience and was disappointing for many players who expected a much bigger map. Season 2 launches on the 25th. Ubisoft are doing a full reveal for the next Rainbow Six Siege operation tomorrow. It's called Crimson Heist and adds a new operator called Flores. He has an explosive charged drone and will be an attacker. Beyond that, Ubisoft haven't really said much about the update. Ubisoft are also the target of a new scam email going around alleging to be a beta in invite for the Far Cry 6 beta. It's a phishing scam that actually looks pretty legit. Following the link in the email automatically installs a keylogger that tracks everything you do on your PC. So if you suddenly get an official looking email from Ubisoft about Far Cry 6, you'd be wise to ignore it. Ubisoft are aware of the scam and have posted on their support team's social media about avoiding it. Indie Tactical FPS Due Process is having a big week. It got two major updates that both added a lot to the game. The first update is Gunplay 2.0. It's a total rework of all weapon recoil values, animations, and more. The results are pretty positive and a big improvement overall. The second update is the introduction of a new map tile set called Kill Dome USA. It features five unique themes, and they're all set in an American Gladiator-style arena. These two updates combined check some big items off the game's early access roadmap. It'll be exciting to see what other major updates are on the way. The game is also 40% off right now if you're thinking about picking it up. The Xbox Series consoles just got an FPS mode that can double or even quadruple the FPS of last-gen titles. It's a free performance bump that is currently available for a handful of games. Over time, support will expand to include many more games. It works by utilizing all available processing power in the new consoles and some software trickery to make the game think that they're running slower than they actually are. It works for titles locked to 30fps and 60fps, running them at the console's max refresh rate of 120Hz. Boost mode is being added on a case-by-case -case basis as it can break games that need to run at specific FPS values if not properly tested. The developers and publishers for any game that gets the boost must approve it before its implementation. Space exploration game No Man's Sky is now Pokemon Minecraft in space. Its latest update is called Champions and lets you take on wild animals as pets and followers. You can have up to six animals as pets at once, but only one can follow you around at a time. They'll help you with mining, detecting resources, and more. You can also breed and trade them. And before we get to our final story today, just a quick reminder that if you're not subscribed and you've made it this far, chances are you'll like our future videos, so hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to catch the next upload. A reverse engineering project for Grand Theft Auto 3 in Vice City has been served a cease and desist by Take Two. The team behind the project essentially rebuilt the source code for both games and posted it on GitHub for anyone to download. Modders could use these files to fix bugs, expand mods into unexplored territory, build new games, and much more. It's pretty obvious that the project was doomed from the start though. Take Two and Rockstar don't mess around when it comes to protecting their games. We actually have a tough time covering their titles because they automatically copyright claim any trailers that we might use when covering use, hence the still images for this story. So of course it comes as no surprise that they would take down reverse engineered source code of some of their biggest titles. And that wraps it up for this week in gaming. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.